Is the Nikkor Z 24-200mm to the only lens that you will ever need? It would of course be wrong of me to say that's the case for everyone, but for those with a compatible camera who shoot only landscapes, who feel the quality is suitable for their needs, then it very well could be. Hello everyone and thank you very much for joining me today. Today I'm out to shoot with only one lens. It's the Nikon Z 24 to 200 lens. That's what I've got in my camera just now. And it's the only lens I'm going to be using today to take some photographs. Hopefully I'll find a nice shot or two. But I'm going to talk throughout this video all about this lens. I want to talk about why I've bought it, the good points, the opportunities that it brings, and also some of the negative sides of the lens as well. They're not too bad, but there are a few little things I need to be aware of if I'm considering using this lens. So I just want to talk about why I bought it and also why I bought it considering I also have a 24 to 70 f4s lens as well. So that's the topic of this video. I hope you enjoy it, but for now I need to find some places to photograph. The first reason that I bought this 24 to 200 millimeter lens is because of the fantastic focal length range that it offers in one lens. For me, when I'm doing landscape photography, that is going to cover my needs 95% of the time. I often find that 24 millimeters is wide enough. I don't always want to shoot ultra wide angle. And at the other end of the focal length range, 200 millimeters, I often find that is long enough. So it's just the perfect focal length range for me. I would say I shoot 95% of my shots somewhere in that range. So it really is a fantastic focal length range for my landscape photography all in the one lens. The next thing about this lens which really appeals to me is that it is very light. It weighs 570 grams, which considering it's a lens which I can use in a full frame camera, offering the focal length range 24 to 200 uh, millimeters is quite impressive. That's quite a lightweight lens. I'm really happy to hand hold this most of the day or use a neck strap. So that's fantastic. And just putting this camera and this lens into my backpack versus putting my camera and perhaps two much heavier CF 2.8 lenses into my backpack which cover this focal length range makes a tremendous difference to me. I've talked about this a little bit in previous videos but over the last few years I've been making a strong effort to keep the the weight of my kit down but still try and maintain good quality and I think this lens here is a key part of me being able to achieve this. The quality that it offers is really good. I'll talk more about that later in the video. But it's such a, an advantage and a bonus to have a setup that captures really good quality images but keeps the weight down. It can encourage you to go around that next bend when you're maybe tiring carrying a bag full of other lenses. It can encourage you to walk further up to reach the top of a hill and open up fantastic views and fantastic opportunities for photographs. So keeping the, the weight of my kit down is really important to me. And not everyone is making YouTube videos, of course, 
But everything that I've just spoken about applies to my landscape photography, but also when I consider I'm making YouTube videos, that involves carrying extra weight. And the weight of your kit, everything you need for video making, perhaps carrying some food and water as well, it can get really, really heavy and it can drain your energy, especially if you're walking long distances or climbing hills. So I'm always keeping the weight of my kit set up to the forefront of my mind and this uh, lens and camera combination really helps keep that down and capture fantastic quality images. I'm not really sure what the weather's going to do today as I've been walking along there's been some light rain it lasted maybe five six minutes and went off but there's an awful lot of ominous dark grey cloud around so it could come on heavy rain I hope not the light's quite flat at the moment it's not great for photography but we'll see what happens I'm sure I'll take a photograph at some point hopefully a couple at least but this is related to the next benefit of having this 24 to 200 millimeter lens. I know when I'm out, I'm not going to need to change lenses. And that's fantastic if it, if it comes on heavy rain or if I'm in an environment where there's a lot of dust blowing around and that could potentially go into the sensor. It's great to know you don't need to change lenses. As I say, this focal length range offered by the lens covers 95% of my needs. And the other thing is that not having to change lenses does increase, in my opinion, your opportunities for taking nice photographs. So, for example, I could be up a hill or a mountain taking in a, a wide angle shot, some nice foreground mountains in the background. And then off to the side, I see suddenly the light comes out and illuminates a mountain peak and I see a composition and I know it's a fleeting moment which I have to grab. I probably don't have time to change lenses. I can simply use the lens that's on the camera and grab the shot. So it does offer some fantastic benefits, not having to change lenses and knowing that the lens that's on your camera covers a wide range of opportunities and you can maybe grab some shots that you would otherwise miss if you had to change lenses. But anyway, I'm going to continue on my walk today and fingers crossed the rain won't come on. So I have to be honest and say that I'm really struggling. It's got an even more overcast. And if I do find any nice potential compositions, they just look flat and lifeless due to the, to the light. So I have found a few things that have interested me, but they just wouldn't make nice photographs today. But I have found something in a very small section of this river just behind me here. And I apologize if there's a lot of noise in the audio, but it is quite loud. Also, the midges have come out in force and they are being an absolute nightmare. But other than that, everything is going well. But anyway, I do like this shot. What I've decided to do, and it's something I will often do when the light is poor on a, on a day such as this, is see if I can focus in on a small area that doesn't depend on having sky in the image. And there was a nice little bit of light on a particular section of this river just behind me. And what I liked and what caught my attention was the way the water is just coming over a few rocks uh, just behind me here. So just a very small section caught my eye. So I've zoomed in on the 24 to 200. I'm at probably something like 130 millimeters. And I'm just trying to create a nice pleasing composition. And when I slow my shutter speed down to roughly one and a half seconds, maybe even slightly longer than that. I quite like the look of this little scene. I'm also using my polarizer turn just ever so slightly, just to take off a little bit of the glare. But it is being a struggle, or sorry, it is a struggle today, but quite glad I found this little shot. So I've captured this one, I hope you like it, and it's time to move on and keep the fingers crossed that the rain doesn't start.
As I said while on location, the sky became incredibly overcast and the light went really flat. The video makes it seem better than it actually was. All things considered, I feel quite pleased with the two images that I created. Due to YouTube compressing this video, you won't see the image in the quality that I can when viewing the raw file at full size, but hopefully you can see that the lens has produced very good quality and very sharp images, especially considering it is a super zoom. The tiny growth in the rocks is very sharp, and I was surprised to see a tiny insect on one of the rocks. On the raw file, I can easily make out its legs and body. But anyway, I moved on and things began to get even more challenging. So I'll quickly show you the subjects which I've just been photographing. I've got this dead tree here, and then we've got a Scots pine leaning over uh, behind it. And I've been shooting this from much further back. And I think I'll be using a one-to-one -one aspect ratio for this shot. So I'll show you that one shortly. I hope you like it, but it's been one of the most difficult photographs I've ever taken. The light uh, is really poor. It came on rain. And I've never seen so many midges in my life. I've been out in uh, summer in Scotland a lot but they are like a plague of flies. It's just been an absolute nightmare. Actually quite unpleasant, uh, but I've got the shot. The reason I'm over here is I've had to run just to get away from the spot I was in. And I got a few seconds respite from them, but obviously now that I've slowed down, they're starting to surround me again. But this is going to be the last image that I've captured today because the conditions really have deteriorated and apparently not for the midges <laughs> they really like it for some reason I'm definitely not someone who likes complaining, far from it, but this has been the most difficult and taxing video for me personally that I've ever made. Not because of the challenging conditions and lack of light, but just because of rain, because of these midges, it's the worst I've ever seen them. And I've obviously experienced them throughout years worth of summers. Uh, I do have midge nets and so on, but I need to take them off to, to look through the viewfinder, etc. And as soon as you do that, there's just thousands of them on you. And there's been some really heavy rain, difficult things that I've not shown in the camera, but it's just been incredibly taxing and challenging to find good photographs. But anyway, that's my little rant, <laughs> if you can call it that. But I want to finish this video by talking about the negatives or slight downsides of the Nikon Z 24-200mm lens. I've been talking about all the positives, there's plenty of them, but there are of course slight negatives. Otherwise we would all just buy one lens which covers a huge focal length range. Why spend more money on multiple lenses if there's not an advantage? Why carry extra weight? So I've been doing a lot of testing between the lens I'm talking about and also my 24-70 f4 lens. And it does offer slightly better quality, but it's not hugely significant. The main issues I'm seeing with the 24-200 is that it suffers more from chromatic aberration. And if you look at 100% magnification in your editing software, and you look at the extreme edges and extreme corners, the 24 to 200 is slightly softer, but it's not terribly soft, at least not my copy of the lens, but there is a quality difference. And if I really, really, really scrutinize them, I think the images from the 24 to 70 are just ever so slightly punchier, maybe a, just a hint more contrast, a hint more sharpness overall, but it is minuscule and you really need to pixel peep to see that. And where, where or when do these differences become apparent? Well, if you're shooting in a controlled environment, indoors, controlled lighting, you're shooting test charts, you see this type of thing, 
out in the landscape shooting outdoors it's perhaps perhaps not quite as noticeable probably not noticeable on an A4 or an A3 print perhaps either so why do I have the 24 to 70 f4 lens well if there's a shot I'm going to take and I want to get the maximum quality and I know know the area and I know that's the only lens I need I will take it just to get the maximum quality also if I need the constant f4 aperture again I'll use the 24 to 70 for that and also it's very handy for my video work with the the constant f4 aperture the 24 to 200 is a variable aperture and of course if I was to buy the f2.8 versions of Nikon's Z lenses such as the 24 to 70 and their 70 to 200 again I suspect I would see a bit more quality difference in those especially if I pixel peep those lenses are more expensive much more expensive partially because they offer a, a wide open aperture of f2.8 but they will probably offer better quality images as well but they're far more expensive and they are far heavier and you have to carry multiple lenses but overall I'm extremely satisfied with the 24 to 200 uh, I would be very happy to take a shot which is one of my portfolio shots with this lens I would be happy to sell prints uh, from images taken with this lens I, I wouldn't sell anything I'm not 110% happy with and I definitely would be happy uh, to sell you no know, large prints taken with this lens it really does provide excellent quality but I think from me and my 20 million little friends which have joined me again I'm really gonna have to end this video here but I hope you've enjoyed watching I hope this has provided some useful information you can see why I've bought the lens, why it may work for you if you're a, a Nikon Z shooter and uh, why I also have the 24 to 70 so there's times I will know that I can get the shot within the 24 to 70 range and use that lens there's other times I'll just go out with the 24 to 200 and there's times I'll go out with both it gives me a lot of options but anyway I have to end the video here. Thank you so much for watching. I really do hope you've enjoyed it. And hopefully I'll see you in my next one. But without my millions of little friends. Oh, they're horrible.